This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. We all know that Botox is used to help erase wrinkles, but it's slowly moving its way out of the beauty parlor and into medicine cabinets, so to speak. There are now different uses for Botox. This morning we have Dr. David Cleaver, a board certified dermatologist, to break it down for us. How are you doing today? Very good. Thank you for having me on the show. Thanks for coming on. So Botox is really interesting because it's been around for a while, and of course we've heard horror stories about it, sure. uh, botched, you know, um, work, but. Uh, it's definitely developed over the years and not as only used to erase or help erase wrinkles uh, temporarily for a while, but it's also used for other other things. So before we talk about that, let's talk about different types of Botox. So is Botox like a like a brand name or? Right, Botox is a brand name. Okay. And it's part of the botulism um, toxin family. Okay. And in the past couple of years, we've, we have some more options. Botox was the first one on the market, so it's kind of like the Nike of shoes. Everyone knows about it, but there's some other ones on the product. This one is, is Zeman, which is um, new within the past two years or so. And the, it, it basically works the same as, as Botox. Um, the advantage is when you get more competitors on, on any market, not just the, the, the um, Botox uh, market, but any market, um, the cost goes down a little bit. So that's an advantage of having some more competitors out there okay. um, to compete with Botox. So for our viewers that, you know, aren't really familiar with what Botox does, explain the process and what it actually does. Well, Botox has been around for, for quite some time now, since the late 90s. Um, originally, it was developed for uh, cervical dystonia or where you cannot, your muscles tighten in your neck mm -hmm. and you can't turn your neck. Also developed for ocular spasms, so people that would have bad ocular spasms. At the same time, they figured out, hey, this will prevent all these, these wrinkles that we don't like. So mm -hmm. they started using it, and it's been around. Uh, we've been using it. For, uh, it's been approved for cosmetic purposes since about 2002. So we've had a lot of experience with it. Basically, we use Botox from the, the eyes up to um, basically they, it paralyzes the muscles. When it paralyzes those muscles, it prevents uh, your muscles from contracting, which prevents those wrinkles that, that form, especially here in the glabella area. Mm -hmm. um, the forehead area, and then the, the crow's feet area, so around the eyes. And that was just recently approved within the past year around the eyes, but people have been using it for much longer than that around the eyes. So how long does it last? Like how often does somebody go in and actually get this done? So the, the way Botox works is it blocks a, a specific enzyme um, at the end of your nerves, and so it only lasts for a certain period of time. And it lasts three to four months. So um, about three to four months, you'll start to see some of that muscle return, some of those lines return. What Botox does do, though, over a long period of time is it can help prevent um, the wrinkles from getting as bad. So um, what we see more and more often now are younger people coming in to prevent wrinkles um, down the road because it can atrophy those muscles. I, I equate it to if you go to the gym every day, you work out, you build up your muscles. If you stop going to the gym, your muscles get weak and, and, mm -hmm. and, and get smaller. And so by making those muscles smaller over a long period of time, it can help prevent wrinkles down the road. So we see people in their 20s. Um, and, and 30s coming in for Botox for preventative purposes. Okay, and you, and you said, you know, younger people. Is there an age limit? Um, uh, yeah. You know, do you have to be 18 years or older? I, 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 know, I know you see, you watch reality TV shows with the Real Housewives of whatever, sure. and their daughters are 16, and they're going with their moms, you know, to the plastic surgeon and getting Botox, sure. and you look at them, and they still have baby skin. Sure, and that doesn't make good common sense to, to right. do that in, in those people. But um, as you get later, uh, later 20s, um, 30s, uh, we, we see a lot more of it. Um, so it, it was, it's safe in kids. It was that cervical dystonia is usually mm -hmm. in kids and, and used at dosage, dosages uh, 10, 20 times more than what we do for cosmetic purposes. So um, you, if you read about a lot of the bad side effects, that's usually where it came from is they were injecting high quantities of Botox for, um, for kids in areas of the neck where there's some very important vessels that, that uh, you wouldn't want to hit. So it's very uncommon to have any uh, real bad complications from uh, Botox when we use it for cosmetic purposes. The biggest side effects you get, maybe a little bruising, a little swelling right afterwards, mm -hmm. it takes three to five days to kick in. So it doesn't kick in right away. So you don't, you, when you walk out of the doctor's office, you don't notice a difference that day. It kicks in about five, seven days wow. afterwards. So. Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about uh, what it can be used for uh, for other things. I've heard that a lot of celebrities will use it for excessive sweating in their hands and underarms, especially if they go on a big red carpet event. And is that true? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's also used for hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating um, of, the, of the palms, of the underarm area. Um, we inject it at higher doses than what we do for cosmetic purposes. 
Um, but it can, it can um, prevent sweating in those areas because it, again, it denerv denervates the, uh, those, those uh, sweat glands. And so it can prevent it for up to three months, uh, six months at a time. So. so you don't sweat? Exactly. Is that healthy? Um, well, the, the, yeah, it, it's, it's okay for you to do um, because you're sweating elsewhere, so you're, okay. you're losing okay. some of that, that temperature. Um, but you do run into a little more side effects when you put it in the hands because you have some important muscles in the hand that you don't want to paralyze as well. So, um, so but it, it works great and, and, and does a good job for that. So. Interesting. Do you have people coming in for, for, for sweat problems to get this done? We do. We see it much more okay. commonly used for cosmetic purposes. Okay. But we do see some people that uh, uh, come in for the, for the hyperhidrosis. You see people that come in, Botox is used for lots of other things. Um, it's used for headaches. Uh, so you'll see some neurologists that will inject for headaches. Really? It's used for bladder spasms. So sometimes I've read you, that as you'll, well. you'll see a urologist or ob uh using it for that. So it's, it has lots of different purposes, and, and we're still finding purposes for it every day. So it's an exciting product. Um, that, that works well. The, the two different things I have up here, these are fillers on the, on the left side of the table, and, and these are the, the Botox products. The fillers are, are typically used for the lower face, so from the cheeks on down to oh. replace volume, versus these, help the Botox products help to uh, reduce those wrinkles in the upper face because they paralyze those muscles. All right, well, thank you so much. And uh, we do know that you have an uh, open house tomorrow. What we'll do is we'll post all of that information on our website at heartlandconnection.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Cleaver, for coming on. And again, we'll post everything on our website at heartlandconnection.com. And we'll be right back.